All right, for our uh, character spotlight today, uh, we have Brother I or Omak. Oh, yeah. I, forgot. I was talking about that earlier, or last week. No. Nope. So it was that weird comic book that I can't get over. <laughs> like, I got to finish it. I got to find it again. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, the Omaks, like originally the Omaks, are cyborgs, human bodies transformed by a virus into living machines to assassinate any and all beings with superpowers. Oh, the virus was created by Brainiac 13's nanotechnology. I thought it was Batman's thing. Like he always does it to something. No, it originally not him. No. Okay. It was created by Brainiac 13's. Was it like a big like event, or was it just like a mini? I never understood what was going on. Uh, the original thing was called Omac Project, but then there was Brother I and everything else that Batman had influence in. Remember that weird uh, story where it was like an underground like uh, uprising. Mm-hmm. It was in the same, I think it was in the same, like, little preview comic book. Because we had that, we bought that comic book that had the OMAC story. Yeah. And it had, like, little bits of all sorts of stories that were going to be upcoming for the year. Yeah. And one of them was, like, Uncle Sam, like, uh, was rolling up his sleeves. Because he had come <laughs> back from, like, and he was getting ready for a fight or something. Yeah. I don't remember that either. And you remember how Uncle Sam gets his powers, right? From the spirit of the- of The country. American justice yeah. or something. Like, it's how much people uh, love the country. <laughs> he gets stronger. Which is a weird superpower. Like right now, it would be an all-time low. <laughs> just a frail old man at this point. Like a serious Targaryen. <laughs> exactly. Just lesions all over him and stuff. So, again, these uh, the OMAC cyborgs were created by Brainiac 13's nanotechnology, which had been acquired by the U.S. Department of Defense and LexCorp. Okay. And uh, then they were secretly introduced into general vaccine supplies. You motherfuckers. Yeah. The OMACs are featured in the miniseries The OMAC Project okay. that leads up to the Infinite Crisis series. So, we have Brother uh, MK1, or Mark 1, I guess, if you want to go by Marvel's standards of what it means, uh, MK means. Uh, the new uh, OMACs are controlled by Brother MK1, uh, the satellite. The uh, Brother MK1 was created by Batman and programmed by Pseudo Persons Incorporated, their scientist Buddy Blank who, in this retelling of the story, is a partner of Wayne Industries. Uh, its sole purpose was to gather data on all metahumans, both villain and superhero. Batman had grown distrustful of metahumans after remembering that the Justice League altered his memories following an altercation with Dr. Light in Identity Crisis. Okay. So these, this is how Identity Crisis, your favorite <laughs> miniseries, ties into the actual OMAX. So he had become paranoid, basically. Right. I was like, because yeah. after remembering. My damn memories. <laughs> exactly. And whenever Zatanna rem like wiped his entire memories. So I think that was an outsider issue I had once where he was talking to Nightwing and mm -hmm. I was like, I don't remember something. And then, like they did like a little flashback yeah. in black and white of him getting like hit in the face by something. I guess it was Zatanna hitting him with a spell. If I think about it, if I think back about it now. It was either that or Green Arrow. I can't remember which. I know one of them did it though. But yeah, it, like that's a, that's when it came back to him, and he's like, "Oh, hell no!" That was also the issue that uh, Deathstroke was disguised as Batman <laughs> and talking to Speedy. Yeah, and they got into a fight because uh, Speedy found out that it wasn't Batman because Batman was talking to Nightwing back at the Batcave, and they get into an altercation, and of course Deathstroke's beating his ass, and he actually stops the fight out of respect to Speedy because apparently Speedy had taken a bullet to the heart. He's like, oh, that must have been quite a thing. And he fucking dips. And hmm. I'm like, I'm, and I started thinking like, man, that'd be a great uh, character trait for, my, uh, for a character to take a shot to the heart. Yeah. And like, but I, I was researching it, like how it would be like realistic with a man. That would be something. They, like, you know, coming back from a shot to the heart. Yeah. That would not be good. Like the way I saw my character was like, uh, he was a sidekick mm -hmm. to uh, 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 an adventurer. And they got there was an altercation, like maybe like between the ages of thirteen and eighteen, mm -hmm. like a sidekick to all these different like uh, uh, characters, and he would something it would be an altercation at eighteen, and he would accidentally be shot in the heart, and it would take years and years of you know re reparative surgery, mm -hmm. so he would be uh, in his late thirties now, coming back no longer the sidekick, but there would be so much lore from his past that I could just make up for him. Uh, as he returns back to the world of adventuring, right? That, that's how that's the story I'm making right now. Was like uh, that's what happened to him. So uh, that way, when I can, uh, that could be the actual star of it, and uh, that's how the, my character would be like uh, out of the game for so long, right? And he comes back, 
and the first movie would be having him like psychologically feel like his heart's not there, even though it it's, is it's fine. Prepared finally right. after all these years, it's fine. Like so, like, throughout the first movie, he'd be like struggling to like you know because he psychologically like psychologically feels like he's like like a little short of breath, mm-hmm. tired, like. Always like rubbing his chest. feeling like a pain in his chest, right? And then at yeah. the end of the movie, like he would finally overcome that psychological barrier. So he's he's back to being a kind of like how Iron Man had that same type of thing. That's what I was thinking. yeah, like it was be his same. Th- I guess they didn't really do much about. It. Well, in the first movie they kind of did, but it wasn't until the third movie like he finally got it repaired. Right where he got the shrapnel removed. Yeah, yeah. So it would be that like that, and like at the at the end of the like finally he because he I, I want him to keep him as a sidekick. And then when he comes back, he's his own full hero, but he still has all those like, uh, like uh, history with all the other characters. Mm-hmm. So I'd be like, "Well, look who's back." <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I just want to build a full of huge lore world, and I had I had to find a way to like, like, why is he not an adventurer now, when he was when he was younger? So I had to find a get uh, someone something to to stop him. That is a good thing though. Like that's a good premise where he got hurt in such a way that he can't. For years, right, and then he finally comes back, and like the world has changed a lot, so he's trying to readjust to everything, and he's trying to meet up old friends and old enemies. Because you could even have it where, uh, right before he goes back into adventuring, he still has that psychological thing too, while he's trying to physically prepare for it again. Yeah, like like he's getting his wet, like his stuff going ready, right, and like he's just sitting at the table and he's like breathing hard, like you can hear his heartbeat, mm-hmm. and he's like thinking, and like like in the car, like the heart like it beats, but like it it beats off off beat, mm-hmm. so. It, I'm telling you, I'm trying to build a fucking movie. It's going to be fucking gold. Just give me time, baby. <laughs> if I can throw my TV out the window. You got to throw the TV out the window first. Though. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right. So uh, Alexander Luther Jr. later gave the satellite sentience as part of his plans. Maxwell Lord, recently promoted to the top rank of Checkmate, subverted the original mission of the Brother MK1 satellite by uh, inculating a fear and a suspicion of all metahumans to it. <laughs> The first OMAC test uh, subject was named uh, Buddy Blank after the scientist who programmed the satellite originally. The OMAC's history may, uh, may be more recent than Brother uh, MK1's itself. Equus and uh, Pilate, formerly featured in Superman for Tomorrow, uh, are later denounced as former iterations of the OMAC concept. And JLA classified uh, an all mechanical OMAC as an enemy of the metalmen. Since then, the design has improved to the current form with little to no changes to the base model, though. So then we have Brother Eye. When uh, Maxwell Lord brainwashed Superman to kill Batman, Wonder Woman broke Lord uh, Lord's neck to free Superman from his control. Yeah, they don't say the fact that she fucking turned that bitch backwards. Yeah. She didn't just break it. And they talk about Queen Maeve like Wonder Woman. Holy <laughs> shit. Fucking, she fucking twisted his whole fucking neck. You know, that's one thing, too, like with the boys versus the Justice League. Everybody, you know, they, they, they have their comparisons. So, like, Queen Babe would be the the iteration of the Seven's Wonder Woman. Right. But if you put them against each other, oh, my God. Like, Wonder Woman. The scissor would be fierce. <laughs> I think Queen Babe may lose that one. <laughs> uh, because Lord... Uh, Pro offered the solution while held by the, his lasso of truth. Diana believed this was the only course of action possible. She was fiercely criticized for uh, from many quarters of the universe after that, though. So, Brother MK1, rechristening itself Brother I, initiated the King is Dead protocol, specifically designated to use in the event of Lord's death. Damn. It, it ordered all of OMAX, all 1,373,462 of them. I love that. It's a, spe- it's it's a specific, specific number. number. <laughs> to attack and kill all the metahumans on Earth and destroy Checkmate. Is there even enough? Which is what? Us? A million? It's good. Barely like, damn, they're not enough heroes. Yeah. And this is what kind of took place in that prequel thing where they're all activated. They're all ready to go. So why were they chasing that one specific guy? We'll, we'll okay, I'm just making sure. I want to get the yeah. now. <laughs> uh, a, a group superhero effort stopped the attack using an EMP blast as well as a shutdown command given by, uh, by Sasha Bordeaux, who uh, had become a third generation cyborg linked to Brother Eye, now designated Black Knight One. So it had changed its name again. These measures effectively free the majority of the OMAC hosts from their nanotech forms and reduce the number of OMACs to roughly 200,000. So it reduced the number by. You know what? A sixth? Still a fucking... That's a powerful-ass fucking army still. 
That is a shit ton of them. So then in the infinite crisis, we had truth and justice, right? Uh, in response, the satellite uh, broadcast footage of Wonder Woman executing Maxwell Lord. So it wasn't like just the news crew that had been there. It was Brother I that did it. She would be on X, too. Yes. All over X. Wonder Woman snaps his motherfucking neck. <laughs> and it, it, before, it, like, it was preceded by the word murder in capital letters. <laughs> Murder? Question mark? Question mark? <laughs> and it was po- it was posted to all media outlets all over the world, destroying her reputation in the process. After this, Brother I initiated the final protocol called Truth and Justice. By having all the remaining Omax, the 200,000 of them, invade and attack her homeland, the Mascara, to wipe out all of the Amazons. Damn. Because she's the one that killed Maxwell Lord. So it's just a, it's just a revenge plot? Uh, like a programming setup. Mm. Maxwell Lord had some of this already set up to where if he was killed... Oh, uh, <laughs> they up to the murderer. Mm-hmm. Brother I, and being an artificial intelligence, figured it out. It was uh, revealed that Alexander Luther Jr. was the one who wrestled control of Brother I away from Batman. He used it to program his multiverse tuning fork and redirect its energy where he needed it as part of an attempt to recreate Earth 2 and, in turn, a perfect Earth. Brother I continues to aid Alexander Luther by remapping out the multiverse and helping to guard the tuning fork with its Omax, reasoning that it would eliminate the need for heroes like those who Batman had created it to monitor by aiding in the creation of a perfect Earth. So the AI system <laughs> thought that, eh, if there's a perfect Earth, there won't be no need for metahumans. <laughs> and that was what, uh, like how Batman had it monitoring all the metahumans to begin with. So then we go into the downfall of Brother Eye. So Batman leads a collection of superheroes consisting of Hal Jordan, Jon Stewart, Green Arrow, Mr. Terrific, Black Lightning, Black Canary, and the new Blue Beetle, uh, Metamorpho, Booster Gold, and Sasha Bordeaux, to Earth's orbit using intel from Booster Gold and Ted Kord's spaceship. So that's how they found Brother Eye. Okay. So Blue Beetle Scarab allows him to find and reveal Brother Eye's hidden location above the Earth by negating its vibrational frequency, because it's kind of like phased out to where you can't see it. Oh, it's like there's all a little invisibility. Mm-hmm. But just like out of phase, just slightly enough okay. that uh, Brother Eye sends the Omax and the two groups clash. With the, uh, with the two Green Lanterns fighting off, of mo- uh, fighting off most of the Omax and Brother Eye's defenses, the hero's ship crashes into Brother Eye. Metamorpho provides an oxygen supply as Blue Beetle and Booster Gold stay with the ship to guard it. As Blue Beetle later assists in the destruction of the device that Brother Eye used to hide it in orbit and the rescuing of some of the other heroes. Batman goes to distract Brother Eye by shutting off the central computer. Although Brother Eye tries to distract him by showing him Nightwing's confrontation with Superboy Prime. It's like, at the time. <laughs> like, yeah, look at this Batman fucking just some <laughs> chick pulls out her titties. <laughs> oh, like, oh, shit. Because <laughs> he's like, Tingle Betty. This is what's going on. What's going on? <laughs> look over here. Look, look over at here. this Batman. <laughs> How? How about this? But you look at this real quick. That's the, the most childish shit. Oh, no. Look over here. <laughs> they was like, what the fuck? <laughs> Fucking hilarious. It's like out of all things, the most childish. <laughs> but, uh, look over here. Look over here. <laughs> look, cat on the shoulder titties. Where? <laughs> Sasha, linked to Oracle goes to upload every computer virus on Earth into Brother Eye's system, as well as trying to prevent the artificial gravity from shutting down. Black Canary goes to the surveillance room to use her sonic scream to blind the eye. So the actual, like, monitoring device. I, lo- I love I love, the, the rationale. Let's blind this eyeball by screaming at it. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah that's, I love this. <laughs> it's not Green Arrow shooting an arrow into the eyeball. It's her no. screaming. That, that's somehow going to rupture his eye fucking soggy. <laughs> Uh, Black Lightning and Mr. Terrific go to the memory bank so that Black Lightning fries as much of the circuitry as possible, while Mr. Terrific, invisible to machines and electronics, delivers the fatal blow by knocking Brother Eye off of orbit using his orbital thrusters. She ain't never had Black Black Lightning, though. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> it, bu- it busted her rim, uh, busted his memory bank. <laughs> Wasn't there a weird thing where like, he says, like, uh, she's never been hit by Black uh, Lightning, though? Yeah, I think so. It's like some ice woman or something? Do you remember that? Yeah, I think I do remember that. <laughs> so I was like, what? <laughs> never had that Black Thunder. And he just gets hit by a fucking thunderstorm? <laughs> <laughs> what you have black lightning you don't like regular did you guys really write this yes they did the plan works and brother eye is deactivated 
all of the remaining active OMAC shut down, releasing their hosts. So all the, the nano bots or whatever basically fall out of their hosts. <laughs> they come out and just fucking shit them out. <laughs> oh, that would suck. Oh! <laughs> just ripped asses just everywhere. Fucking shit. Uh, as all of the other heroes evacuate Brother Eye as it begins falling from orbit onto Earth, falling apart in the process. It t uh, tries to take Batman down with it, though, telling him he can never trust the costume heroes again after what they had done to him. Batman, however, says that he will take his chances and accepts Hal Jordan's aid in getting to safety. So he's like, you know what? Fuck you, Brother Eye. <laughs> I don't want to die with you. <laughs> Uh, after crash landing in Saudi Arabia, Brother I tries to download its systems into Sasha as a means of self-preservation, but Sasha man manages to destroy the satellite, freeing herself from the nanobots infecting her. Then we have uh, the Michael Cosner part. So DC released DCU, A Brave New World, in June 20. That was it, The Brave New World. That yes. was the actual yes. like, preview comic. A Brave New World in June 2006, which was the epilogue to the OMAC Limited series. Okay. Brother Eye has not fully decommissioned and lies in a NORAD facility, or a NORAD facility. Okay. That's what happened to Brother Eye at the end. So after it crash landed, all that other kind of stuff, it technically it's fully decommissioned, but it's in a NORAD facility. So Michael Cosner is the last OMAC unit, kept it as an emergency backup, and Brother Eye calls to him. This Brother Eye has corrupted programming and now believes all humans need to be subjugated and or exterminated whether metahuman or not. Damn. So now it went from just metahumans to everybody. Fuck everybody, man. It has also recently begun to manifest disassociative behavior with at least two personalities now being heard in the OMAX internal conversations. Nice. <laughs> this is bipolar too. Split personality. <laughs> the 2006 OMAC limited series, and not to be confused with the 2005 OMAC project limited series, follows the last OMAC, Michael Costner. Mm. So that's the character that we were chased. talking about. Yeah. Uh, Brother Eye attempts to make Costner rebuild itself, but is forced to face his wrath when Costner begins, uh, regains control of both of his forms, human and OMAC, and subsequently destroys Brother Eye again. Although a tiny fraction of it is still active. Damn. So there's so one little piece left. And then we have the countdown to Final Crisis. Uh, a portion of Brother Eye was later retrieved and rebuilt by Buddy Blank, a former scientist from Wayne Industries. This portion meets with the time-traveling karate kid, who is a... Si yes. <laughs> I don't know why I found it. So, a fucking guy just comes out of the fucking portal from time. Is like, <laughs> you remember who he looks like? That? No, where he supposedly knows all martial arts. Oh god, Karate Kid, the Karate Kid. He's one of the le uh, what is the Legion of Superheroes? The the future thirty first century. Oh, he's one of those. Yeah, yeah, he's from. It'd be yeah. funny if like, I had the, the epilogue it'd be for all the characters after like this. Let's say it was a miniseries of all the characters, right? Yeah. And like uh, it shows what happened, like, happened to them after the miniseries. It's like Karate Kid, a mysteriously shot in an alley. <laughs> <laughs> all that shit gets fucking shot in the heart. Because <laughs> they didn't play fair. It's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, uh, that Penguin miniseries mm -hmm. from the Matt Reeves, the Batman. Yeah. It's coming out in September. Oh, really? I don't know if it's a miniseries or if it's a seasonal thing, mm -hmm. but it's, it starts out, the sh episodes start to drop in September. Oh, cool. Where the Penguin trying to uh, uh, consolidate his power yeah. and become the new crime boss of Gotham. It's like it's almost like right after the the movie, too, because the flood's still out there. Hmm. It's like, look what that madman did. I, I might as well cover but What's it supposed to be on? Is it supposed to be uh, Max? Max? Max, yeah. Oh, cool. I'll have to look into that, too. Uh, yeah. All right, uh... The time traveling karate kid who is seeking a yeah. cure, a cure for uh, Mordecacus. He's trying to find a cure for his for this for these fucking hands that just can't quit. A thirty first century illness that evolved from the Omac virus. Damn, that sucks. Yes, so that shit is still all the way out there in the thirty first century. Exactly. So announcing that the great disaster has come to me, Brother I directs him to Bloodhaven. Soon after. It reactivates its offensive protocols and assimilates the hangar it is being held in, turning the people within the hangar into new OMAC cyborgs again. Never, it never ends. It then travels to the ruins of Bloodhaven and assimilates the city's infrastructure and the people within it, using the Atomic Knights and Firestorm as power sources. Do you remember a storyline where they dropped some fucking being in Bloodhaven and he blew up like a nuclear bomb. Yeah, this takes place after that. Is that that? Yeah, because there's nobody in Bloodhaven anymore. Man, that was wild. Like, yeah. they, there's, some, there's some fucking weird, like, it looked like a fucking plasma 
entity, like in, in like a suit. Mm -hmm. He just fucking comes out that helicopter, the plane, like a, in a halo drop. And he's like, ah, and he just fucking blows up. Yeah. And then Nightwing was like, what the fuck? Yep, the sixth place after this. So this is part of the same continuity. What yeah. happened? Why, why did they do that? Was it a supervillain? I think it was a supervillain. So they just they dropped a fucking dude. <laughs> just boom, <Damn>. blew. <laughs> uh, later, it activates a, it activates a boom tube and travels to Apocalypse. So what's up? Where it assimilates the entire planet and attempts to obtain the Morticaucus virus from Karate Kid, who has also been led there. It is forced to flee Apocalypse when it is attacked by the Pied Piper using the Anti Life Equation. What the fuck is going on? You got the Karate Kid. You got the Pied Piper. Yeah, you remember the Pied Piper? What the fuck is going it's on? Like one of those uh, deedless villains. Yeah, <laughs> just like they just throw the red Robin Hood came out with his blue and arrow. <laughs> well, green arrow. So, like, what is going on? These random name drops. <laughs> so later, Brother Eye transforms Bl uh, Buddy Blank into a modified Omac, resembling Kirby's version of the character. Buddy uses his power to save himself and his grandson. It's funny, like in my head, I imagine Kirby, like the pink little alien. I know. <laughs> Kirby, Kirby, Kirby. <laughs> Uh, he uses his power to save himself and his grandson from starvation in the commandy bunker beneath Bloodhaven. Brother I implies that it will contact Buddy again for a future need. So it's still around. Damn, it's never ending. Uh, exactly. God dang, old Mac. And then we have it appearing in Batman and the uh, Batman and the Outsiders. So a modified OMAC is shown as part of the new Outsiders team in the 2008 Batman and the Outsiders series. Mm -hmm. So when a team from the Justice Le from the Justice League attempts to uh, seize a partially active OMAC, a leftover from the OMAC project events, Batman takes the opportunity to reclaim it for himself, having Doctor Francine Langstrom, the the doctor that he's friends with. Mm -hmm. Uh, create a clever forgery to leave it in the care of the League. The OMAC, aptly uh, renamed Remac. Oh, wow. That writer must have been like, the most, <laughs> that my, my writer must have been like, man, this fucking shit is on fire right now. Remac. Remac. <laughs> Appears to be an iPod with a track list wipe. What the fuck? Yes, yes. It looks like it takes the form of, of an iPod. A fucking iPod. With no track list on it. Uh, Dr. Langstrom is unable to discern who Remac was before being infected by the Remac virus. Finding Remac a mere husk, devoid of any personnel identity, uh, th this complete lack of personality makes Remac the perfect infiltrator. Using its advanced shape shifting abilities and its unquestioning obedience for the outsider's sake. Since its lack of personality allows villains to snatch control of Remac, turning it into an enemy, Batman rigs up a uh, telepresence system turning Remac into an advanced drone for Sala Mian, uh, Mian, I'm going to fuck this name up, uh, Miandad, Dr. Langstrom's sh uh, chief attendant, or assistant, enabling operation from the Outsider's HQ, the Batcave, and other secret locations. While testing a new neural interface less dependent from his stamina to control the former Omac, Sala is knocked into a coma. His mind comes to reside in Remac. Supplanting the missing personality of the drone for a while, one full issue. <laughs> 32 pages. Yes. I guess 22, honestly, because they- 20, Yeah, like, it's all the ads and stuff. God dang ads. Uh, until, due to the machinations of the villainous Simon Hurt, Remac is fed a malicious self-destruct code that blows it to pieces, making the restoration of Sala's consciousness impossible. Hmm. Uh, we also have it reappearing in Final Crisis. So in Final Crisis, Darkseid and his prophets from Apocalypse have taken new forms as humans on Earth after mass distributing the anti-life equation around the world. Batman had been captured, Superman is on a journey in the multiverse, and Wonder, Wonder Woman has become a female fury. So, Damn. yeah. She got wild. Yes. With most of the world's population to the, under the influence of the equation... So dog said a human? Yeah, because he used the anti-life equation for the entire world. What's he look like? A bald guy. Like a built fucking bald guy? Build a fucking beer belly. <laughs> <laughs> they are effectively under Darkseid's control, seemingly making him the ruler of Earth. In the one-shot final crisis called Resist, Mr. Terrific and the Checkmate, or Checkmate organization are working uh, a mount of re uh, to mount a resistance against Darkseid, but seemingly do not have the means to do so. Sitting in despair in a Checkmate stronghold, Snapper Carr, through his hopeless rants, gives Mr. Terrific an ingenious idea using Sasha Bordeaux to make contact with Brother Eye. He convinces the AI to help him, explaining that it will surely be destroyed if Darkseid captures the actual world itself. Realizing this, Brother Eye accepts Mr. Terrific's terms, 
and it reveals that there are still millions of people infected with the the old Mac Nano tick. Like I'm like herpes, I'm still here. <laughs> These people are now mindless drones of Darkseid are overridden by Brother Eye and become Omak soldiers under the command of Mr. Terrific. This gives Checkmate and him the means to forcefully resist Darkseid. During the final crisis events, when all seems lost, uh, Lord Brother Eye prepares to leave the doomed Earth with his Omaks and the people of Command D, the bunker underneath Bloodhaven, and start a new society on another Earth and another universe. To this end, he asks Rene Montoya to serve as the head of a to-be-founded global peacekeeping agency, her faith faceless appearance as the question being an allusion to the faceless agents of the GPA from the original OMAC series. A lot. Yeah. It's a lot going on. It, too much going on, basically. You remember that weird uh, uh, event where Earth lost to Darkseid or something? And uh, it was like partially thanks to Lex Luthor helped out. Mm -hmm. on the villain side and for for his contribution i don't know if it was dark side or so, so whatever main bad guy was mm -hmm. he said like he was gonna get lex luther first rights to rape a supergirl mm -hmm. you didn't read that i was like what sounds familiar the fuck yeah it sounds very familiar <laughs> it was the darkest shit i've ever read in dc <laughs> yeah it gets bad uh Omak also appeared in Generation Lost. So in the Justice League Generation Lost limited series, the resurrected Maxwell Lord controls a squad of Omaks attacking Jamie Reyes's home and his family. Or sorry, Jamie. Hi, Amy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Jamie's fine. <laughs> it's spelled Jamie, it's Jaime. It's like Jorge is George. It's Hyman. Hyman. <laughs> uh the old Justice League. Oh, uh Jose is actually Jose. <laughs> Jose. Or Josie. <laughs> uh, the old Justice League International arrives and takes Jaime's family to safety. Or if you're named Jesus, they just call you Jesse. <laughs> they don't even try to say Jesus. <laughs> they don't want to say Jesus at all. <laughs> or Jesus. Who's like, hey, Je Jesus, you missed a spot in there on the lawn <laughs> that you forgot to cut. <laughs> <laughs> uh, after Max escapes from the JLI, Booster Gold's partner Skeets informs Ske Jesus. I was going to Skeet, 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 Skeet. <laughs> <laughs> from the window to the wall just little john in a, in a mask it's <laughs> called name is skeets uh, <laughs> so booster gold's partner skeets informs the jli that he has the locations of the four formerly dom uh, dormant checkmate cells wait is that that little like thing that moves around with him mm -hmm. camera That's yeah his name is skeets, skeets. <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, which has been placed inside a robotics laboratory that Max has been con uh, contracted with. The JLI traveled to Chicago beneath the hidden robot robotics laboratory and learned that the Omax variants were pure robots that are human machine syntheses of the originals. Skeets scans the fingerprints on the robotics laboratory and discover that Professor Ivo had been there. When Captain Adam, is uh, Captain Adam absorbs the energy from Magog's spear, he is propelled forward through time 112 years in the future, where Max while long dead, has plunged humanity into a massive metahuman war that is ruled by Omax. Thanks a lot, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Adam battled for survival alongside the future versions of the Justice League, but they are all eventually contaminated by a new version of Omax, and one by one become Omax themselves. Captain Adam is eventually returned to the present, but not before Batman, Damian Wayne at the time, tells him to stop Max's ultimate plans. Damien Wayne. Imagine a 13 year old Damien Wayne and then the actual adult Superman suit all fucking like the. the Where's the dragon? Yeah. <laughs> it's all bundled up in his legs. And his fucking arms are all. <laughs> just like folded all. Yeah, it's all folded in together. <laughs> uh, afterward, uh, Max gains new mental powers that can allow him to transform and uh, transform his uh, targets into cadaver black lanterns and then into Omax after being fully restored to life. Max uses a device to enhance his new abilities, and he is able to turn people from around the world into Omax that will attack Wonder Woman and the JLI. After this, Max sends his newest Omax, known as Omax Prime, to which he has uh, given both sentience and his voice to attack Diana and the JLI. So they still got a, a little uh, revenge. On. Yeah. He's got a little revenge crush he still got <laughs> for Wonder Woman. Hope she snapped his neck. So I don't forget. <laughs> This new Omak could assimilate the abilities of metahumans to grow ever stronger with time, initially overwhelming the heroes of fought. During the final battle, Prime takes Blue Beetle's power, causing it to become nearly unstoppable. 
But a Blue Beetle mentions to Olmec Prime that it cannot control the Scarab's power. Blue Beetle uses this to uh, paralyze Prime with crippling system failures before attacking and destroying Omak Prime for good. Uh, then there's a possible future in which Damian Wayne as Batman is shown having succeeded at what his father had failed to do, regaining control of Brother Eye. Hmm. Uh, there's also another thing with uh, Kevin Ko. Uh, a Cambodian-American named Kevin Ko is introduced uh, as the new Omak, but not like... Um, Omac as in Brother I, but Omac is in one machine attack construct. So it's Omac still. Wow. Like the original, remember the old, like 1950s, uh, I think there was an Omac, but it had nothing to do with like artificial intelligence at the time. That's kind of what he is at this point. Uh, and this guy, uh, Kevin, uh, worked as a genetic researcher at Project Cadmus. Maxwell Lord is revealed to have a hand in Ke uh, tr Kevin's transformation in addition to using new Genesis technology. The series was canceled after running eight issues. <laughs> uh, during the Forever Evil storyline, the crime syndicate of America had captured Kevin, uh, had captured Kevin Coe's OMAC form and was planning to use him as a weapon. Harley Quinn, who was working for the Thinker, remember the Thinker? There's like a bunch of names just being pulled out of the hat here. <laughs> Uh, takes Omak and activates him, causing uh, him to fire a laser on the mountain, which collapses onto the two teams inside. Well, damn. Uh, Harley arrives at uh, Bella Reeve and drops Omak near James Gordon Jr. James Gordon Jr. also thinks that the Thinker is planning to use Omak while uh, James Gordon Jr. is talking to Harley. The Thinker is taken uh, Omak and begins transferring his mind into it. Now activated, Omak uh, proceeds to attack Amanda Waller, James Gordon Jr., Harley Quinn, King Shark, and Camo. King Shark begins to attack Camo until Amanda Waller is able to lie to them both to help her defeat Omak. Omak is fighting King Shark and Camo whenever Amanda Waller attempts to activate Bella Reeves failsafe through the Thinker's computer. It's a bunch of te technological shit going on here. On. I'm so confused. Yes. Before she's able to do so, Kevin Co. reaches out uh, to tell her that uh, he is trapped within the Omak itself. As Waller works with Co., she, uh, she, yeah. Uh, so the team returns to the mountains only to be dragged into a fight with Omak. Having killed Camo, Omak is able to defeat Power Girl, Steel, Unknown Soldier, and King Shark and heads further into Bella Reeve. Deadshot and Harley find magic bullets that will allow them to gain temporary superpowers. What? Yeah, I, this is a weird fucking series. So. <laughs> Wait, so they shoot themselves with these bullets to gain abilities? Yes. So Deadshot fires them into Harley, Waller himself, and Unknown Soldier, and the squad begins to uh, attack the Omak. Uh, Ko is able to regain control of Omak before Waller has to enact her last resort. Uh, but without knowing it, Captain Boomerang knocks Omak into a uh, porthole, sending him into another dimension. In 2016, DC Comics implemented another relaunch of its books called DC Rebirth, and it restored its continuity to the form as to which the prior of the New 52. <laughs> he is a friend of Jaime Reyes. After seeing monsters in the city, Omak takes control of Kevin and begins fighting. Jaime convinces Omak to help him against a real enemy, and the Omak agrees. So basically, this is like a uh, uh, the New 52 version. The horrible thing, that the, the never-ending shadow that DC has created caused to come across itself. Hmm. So they made it way more fucking complicated than need be. Like, the original Brother Eye made more sense yeah. than this. So, uh, powers and ability. Uh Brother Eye can activate the virus in any infected person at any time with, uh, within planetary range. Once activated, the person is covered in cybernetic armor and becomes a thrall of Brother Eye's commands. An OMAC unit has access to archives in, on, on almost every metahuman on file and can simulate countermeasures to the powers of a variety of superheroes and supervillains for the purpose of targeting the weakness in the opponent. Among the many inbuilt powers of the OMAC drone, uh, they possess flight, enhanced modular physical uh, abilities such as strength, speed, agility, reflexes, stamina, etc., and firing various energy weapons from its facial, chest, eye. Uh, like uh, it's got a, got a good old uh, chest you, piece, like Iron Man. You kind of yeah. Laser blast, bah! And hands. Uh, you always got to have some hands <laughs> with with caustic, <laughs> concussive, or blinding effects. So basically, like a, an Iron Man suit. Uh, in addition, the OMAC unit uh, can metamorphose into uh, their nanobionic forms into various shapes and sizes, i.e. being able to change and alter extremities using limbs as pincers and razor blades or even self-regenerating cannonary, uh, recombine upon and atop one another 
to take on gigantic proportions as well as interface with technology using onboard micro-machinery. Said drones can also repurpose their micro-tech towards disabling and simulating the advanced technology capabilities of uh, innovative creations such as the protective shielding of Themyscira. So that's how they got into Themyscira originally. They integrated into their shield and how they just waited until they uh, were fit uh, or I guess uh, integrated enough to be able to just sleep seep right in. Basically, yeah, yeah, kind of like the the replicators in Stargate. You know, I, you know how I would have done it. I, I would have probably changed their abilities a little bit. Mm-hmm. So when they integrated into the shielding of the Themyscira, right, I would, they would form over like rain. Yeah, and just start dropping like like uh, raindrops. And then uh, before the the uh, Themyscirus knew what was going on, and they were they were coming out of like the puzzles were starting to morph into the actual robots again. That would be a good idea. They'd be like, "What the fuck?" Like they turn around like all, like uh, just like a field of rain. Like they, they start coming up out of the grass because that's Omax, you know, starting to form. That'd be a good idea, though. I know I'm a god dang st- literary. I'm a story <laughs> genius now. Uh, their function is the application of nanotechnology to simulate the weakness of an opposing supernatural or superpowered being. Whilst retain, uh, disdaining and dispatching them, uh, such as sh- uh, such as shooting fire, projecting needles of artificial cellulose, uh, so basically fake wood against Alan Scott, <laughs> which they did. They, they created fake, fake wood. wood at him. It's like a baseball bat across his dome because it was an approximation of his weakness to wood. Uh, so they created cellulose, the uh, the material of wood. <laughs> that, that must suck for him. I bet it did. <laughs> Dispensing flame-retarding foam, even one simulating Shazam's lightning power, forcing Mary Marvel to revert to her human form. Oh, wow. So they're basically like those, uh, well, I guess they did it first, but they're like the uh, the Sentinels from the uh, the actual movie, yeah. Days of Future Gone, because yeah. they, they would transform into whatever they needed to be. Yep. Uh, it can disable the Eradicator effort- effortlessly, so the Superman character, the Eradicator. But Remember him. He's the one that had the yellow visor during that Reign of Superman series. He's a, with the, the fucking leather jacket. Is that him? No, oh, that's Superboy. Okay. Uh, the Eradicator is the one that always wore a yellow visor thing, like over his eyes. But he was the one that uh, uh, the one that blew up and destroyed the city. No, that was uh, Cyborg Superman. Oh, <laughs> there's so many different Superman that happened. Yeah, I think blue and red Superman too. I remember those two. <laughs> Like the the after the death of Superman though, uh, they sure really went crazy with the storylines. Yeah, it, it, uh, let's see here. I'll show you a picture of him. Do, do, do. Trying to find one of the old pictures though. Oh, here we go. The Eradicator. Hmm. Oh, he was like the more serious one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But not the cyborg Superman right. version. Because the cyborg Superman version looked very close to just a normal Superman at the time. Then he started to get like getting like like little pieces of him like cut broken, right? Yeah, yeah. And he started showing more metallic and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah. That. So basically the same. I he they took out the eradicator though, since he's somewhat machinery programming. Yeah. Uh the only weakness an OMAC has is that of its human beneath its shell. Intended as a deterrent to prevent heroes from using lethal force against them. Smart. Yeah. The OMAX are dependent on their ass- uh, assessment of individual heroes and villains. When fighting multiple opponents, they require a few seconds to adapt to their countermeasures for each meta in question. Adam Smasher was able to stop an OMAC from a- attacking the JSA by stomping it before he could assess his threat level. <laughs> so, so you, say you just got to hit them before they can think. Yep. Omax are also very vulnerable to Mr. Terrific, as he cannot be detected by technology, hmm. which I didn't realize that was one of his abilities. Technology can't detect him. There's a comic book. I saw a comic strip a while back of uh, a Wildcat getting, like, uh, energy from Nova. He's like, hey, but like, he, like, Nova, I don't know if this is the character, but he, he energized a, a Wildcat's one of his hands, right? Mm-hmm. So he, he would lay a fucking right hook on somebody. With like all the Nova energy behind it. Oh fuck! Like, give me just enough to let me finish this fight, and he just fucking just socks someone in the fucking face. I was like, damn, I gotta find that comic book. Cause like they're both like I guess like on their last legs. Yeah. It's like Nova, give me some power, and like he uses up his hands. Like you can see him glowing, mm-hmm. and like he's like with the heavyweight boxer level uh, punching power, also oh, with the actual with, power with actual fucking energy. Uh, but having the know-how of actual strikes. He just like fucking, I'm assuming he just came up and just fucking slammed someone in the face. <laughs> I'll see if I can find something on that. Cool. Next time. 
Uh, and last little bit though, because the rest of it goes into Remac, which is a weird Remac. The, the whole thing with him again. Uh, but there was also a time in Superman Batman series where Brainiac temporarily occupies a prototype of an OMAC drone to make use of its nanovirus technology. So that way he basically could rebuild himself again yeah. as Brainiac tends to do. Like, I'm back. 